so much for joining us tonight for our sixth Healthy Oceans, Healthy Minds Talks. Um, my name is Karina and I'm Projects and Events Officer at Keep Northern and Beautiful. Every time. Um, I'm Nicola, I'm the Community Development Officer at Cape Northern Ireland Beautiful and um, me and Karina both work together in the Live Here Love Here team. Thanks Nicola. So firstly we'd like to say a massive thank you to our funders Ocean Conservancy. They're an international conservation body and we're the national coordinators for them here in Northern Ireland so we'll stick a little bit more about them in the chat later on. Um, we are delighted that you're able to join us tonight for our series of talks called End of the Deep End. So we'll be hearing from some wonderful people all immersed in nature, health, sustainability um, and community and all connected by their love of nature and the outdoors and how it impacts them and ultimately their mental health as well. So through the campaign, we want to reconnect people to our seas and waterways and outdoor spaces and to show that what the impact that a healthy river and marine environment can have on our health and well-being and to generally create a society that values the outdoors and the benefits that it can bring. So this is our sixth session, um, but we're like by no means professional at this. Um, we're still always finding our feet and um, we hope that you find today's um, information um, like worthwhile and valuable. And if not, we hope you find this session entertaining. So we do just have like a couple of Zoom rules um, and that we just want to cover it before we begin. So as Karina mentioned, we are recording the session, but um, it's set up to be recorded on speaker view. So that means like only whoever is speaking will be on camera um, as it's recording. And so please feel free to um, chat or ask questions along the way using the little chat function and we'll um, get to those um, towards the end. And then later on um, in the session, we will open up to some question and answers. And this is an opportunity for if you want, you can turn your camera on, you can um, come on and ask some questions live on air. So um, yeah, we really hope that you enjoy it. And um, if you do have any technical issues along the way, just pop that in the chat as well and we'll, we'll help you address them. Thanks, Nicola. So this week, um, the theme for our talks is Plastic Pollution Solutions. Um, and we're talking about everything you can do to protect the oceans and waterways from home. So everything we do impacts the world around us and that thought can often trigger eco-anxiety um, as we try to do it all or we're not really sure where to start. So today our session is hosted by the Attack on Plastics team. So I'm going to hand you over to Claire and tell, to tell you a little bit more about our speakers. Great, thanks Karina. Hi everyone, as Karina said, I'm Claire. I'm the coordinator of our Tackling Plastic NI project and it is funded by the Department of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. And today we have two great speakers with us to, going to talk about tackling plastic. We have Tanya from Infinity Farm, which is based in Belfast and Tanya from Inspire Wellness refill store in Banbridge. And Tanya is very kindly stepping in for her sister today, Christina. So thanks for that. So up first is Tanya from Infinity Farm. And Tanya will be talking about bees, circular economy, plastic solution, and taking action. So over to you, Tanya. Hello. So thanks so much for inviting me. Um, I am just going to get stuck in and do a little bit of talk and then I'm going to attempt to do a Blue Peter style demonstration. Um, so I guess I'll start by this sort of the theme is zero waste and what has that got to do with bees? Well, I guess the simple, the simple answer with zero waste is that we don't want to send anything to landfill, that we don't want waste to even exist. We want to we don't even want to be recycling anything. We want to live in, we want to work towards more of a circular economy where rubbish doesn't exist. But sadly, I guess at the moment we're in a linear economy in that we just take from the earth and then think afterwards about what we're going to do with it. Um, but a good way, the good thing is that society is shifting towards more of a circular economy. Um, and you know, organizations like Live Here, Love Here are really pushing that agenda. Um, but, but one how I think that how I think we can be helped on our way is by looking to the natural world because insects, animals, they don't rubbish doesn't exist. And obviously I love honeybees. So 
from what I know all about honeybees, they're just the most amazing example of a circular economy where everyone has their job and their role and it all works together in unison, apart from, of course, when humans get involved and then things start to go wrong. Um, I should have, I meant to start by talking about Infinity Farm, but I'll talk about that at the end. Sorry. That's right. So, um, yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about some of the different jobs that the honeybees do in the hive and then go on to talk about how wa wax is produced. Um, so the queen bee is essentially the head of the pack. There may be some beekeepers in here um, and we can have a chat at the end about this as well. So yeah, the, the queen bee is widely accepted to be the head, but actually um, there's been some research that shows that there's another group of bees called the oligarch bees are actually controlling the queen. But the queen produces pheromone and that keeps everyone calm. And as long as the, all of the worker bees can sense the, the pheromone, then they'll be happy in their job. And they take on jobs such as um, foraging bees, which will, the foraging bees will go out and forage for the best sources of pollen and nectar. Um, other bees um, look after the young. Um, we have mortuary bees who take care of the dead. So if any bees die inside the hive, they will um, wrap them up into a ball, take them outside um, where they will leave them somewhere to dry out. And then once the, the insect is dried out, they'll pick the bee up and fly as far as they can and discard the bee as far away from the hive in case there's any disease. There is um, guard bees that are always at the entrance of the hive that are um, the enemy of the beekeeper. Um, and they also let off pheromones um, to alert the rest of the colony whenever um, the beekeeper is coming or there's some kind of threat to the hive. Um, and also there are bees that produce the wax so it's only the young bees that are aged between six and eight weeks old that are able to produce wax and they have glands on the underside of their abdomen and they, um, they ingest honey and then the enzymes within their body um, mixes with the honey and excretes the wax, tiny little drops of wax. Once they've excreted it, then another worker bee will come along and she will lap it up and then chew it about in her mouth and spit it out again and then they will start to build the hexagons the famous hexagons that we all know that make the honeycomb so I'll, this is one from a this is a bit of brace comb from a hive um and then within these hexagons the queen lays eggs and then the new the new brood are reared um, if they're allowed to, if honeybees are in the wild, which it's widely accepted now, there are hardly any, if none, that live in the wild. It's only managed colonies at the moment. Um, if they're allowed to do their own thing, they'll, they'll build this brace comb in amazing shapes inside hollow trees and lay their eggs. And then around the outside, um, they will store the honey. So, but as beekeepers, with our hives, we separate the, um, the, the brood box where the young are reared with the honey. So then that makes it easy for us to remove, easy-ish for us to remove the honey. Um, so the wax and egg aren't getting mixed up. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, okay. So then when, so the, what I wanted to say was, yeah, so the good thing about, the interesting thing about honeybees is that they produce excess. So they produce excess honey and wax, but they are not doing that for us. They are doing that as an insurance policy for themselves. So they will always make extra honey um, uh, to keep them going throughout the winter. But oftentimes, um, they don't go into, they don't even go into the stores. They're extremely hard workers and they always have like a, 
a backup plan. Um, as beekeepers, especially Infinity Farm, our, our number one, we're about the bees and we don't even really, uh, the, hun the honey kind of and the wax as byproducts are really exciting and interesting to us. But then the more you learn about honeybees, you don't want to mess with them. You want to leave the honey and the honey for them. But they do make excess and beekeepers, if you're responsible, you can and you look after them well, you can usually take um, some for yourself. Um, it's actually quite labor intensive to um, to take the wax from the hive. I'll just talk a little bit about how we'll take the honey and wax. Um, so you would remove the, the frames of honey and then scrape off the wax cappings and then centrifuge the honey and sort of separate, gradually separate the wax and the honey through a series of sieves and muslin things. And then eventually you're left with a substance that is mostly wax, but has got lots of bits of honey in it and dead bees. So then you have to filter that again and heat it. Um, so it separates and eventually you will end up with beeswax. So actually when the bees excrete the wax, it's clear, but by the time we extract it from the hive, it's taken on the color of the honey and all the other bits and pieces within the hive. Um, so beeswax also will absorb um, any insecticides or anything in, in the atmosphere. Um, it's like a really good uh, litmus test to what's going on in the wider, uh, you know, in the wider biodiversity with pesticide use and so on. So um, it's actually really important that if you are buying what beeswax or beeswax wrap that you know where it comes from. So hold on two seconds. I'm just going to turn the iron on. <laughs> and have a wee breather. There we go. Okay. I don't have an assistant. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to do a demonstration about making beeswax wrap. But first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of, of this. So, um, yeah, so beeswax wrap can take on insecticides or anything like that. Um, we know that there is a huge amount of fraud in the beeswax industry, just like in the honey industry. Um, there is a problem with, um, I, I, I'm sure you're all aware of the honey that you buy in the supermarkets is often been mixed with other substances. And if you just look at the back of the label and it, if it says blend of EU and non-EU, that generally means that it is being, it's just like a a mix of honey from all over the world and there's been lots of reports that um, honey from China they use a lot of um, insecticides um, and that they they don't allow the bees to fulfill the whole process and that they will artificially um, finish off the honey by um, like using heat and so on. So we don't really we don't really know about the quality of the honey coming from China and it's the same with the beeswax. And I've done a little bit of research online because um, I did Infinity Farm. We thought that that would actually be a really good way to make our organization a bit more sustainable was to make a product like beeswax wrap. Um, but actually when I looked into it, I couldn't find any beeswax to source that I could really 100% um, put my trust in. Um, also, um, and lots of lots of people locally um, who make different products and everything are always really keen to um, to have local beeswax. But if you want your product, then if you want to sell it as food safe, then you need to be able to um, track where it's come from, and also with our bees and many bees in Northern Ireland and all over the country, um, we do use like different products like Thymol and that help control um, problems in the hive. For example, the Varroa destructor mite. So you might've heard of that, that it um, the Varroa destructor mite entered the bee population in the 1980s. And since then beekeepers have 
tried lots of different methods to get rid of it and we've never been able to get rid of it but it is necessary to use products in your hive to control that um, so then you've got to be careful that if you use a product like that that then you wait a certain amount of time before you harvest any honey or wax because then that your wax will contain that product um, so so yeah if you are if you are buying beeswax wrap just or beeswax or beeswax wrap and um, it's worth asking the um, the person where they got their beeswax from um, or you can get your beeswax from a local beekeeper um, you could also offer to you it, the thing is with our with our beeswax we like to then may if we have any excess and the time we like to then make it into the frame we like to give it back to the hive rather than buying other wax that may come from China or anywhere so um so oftentimes um beekeepers won't have a lot excess but you could um talk to them and offer to take it off their hands when it's all mixed with the honey and everything and be, be more part of the process um, I think some health food shops sell um, beeswax and it's usually for a, a little bit about maybe half this size it's about two pounds um, which is what you would expect to pay but I would be really wary about buying beeswax from Amazon um, because you've just got no idea where it comes from um, also oftentimes it's mixed with paraffin um, which is not really good either um, and it takes, so as we know, it takes the bees a lot of effort to make the, the beeswax as well. Um, you know, we know we're all familiar with that statistic that um, a, a honey, in the life of a honey bee, she'll make one quarter of a teaspoon of honey. Well, it's even less beeswax she will make in her life. So it's really important that we really respect this as a product. Um, so I like to show people how to make their own beeswax wrap and you know we've done workshops and so on where we've had a little bit of our own and use that. Um, so would you like a little demonstration about how to make a beeswax wrap? Okay. I, I also feel like I have to confess that um, I use like a lot of different things at home for preserving food like sometimes it's it's just it's okay to just put a plate on top of a bowl you don't actually need beeswax wrap but it's quite good for things like avocado um, because it, it kind of sticks to the the um, stone bit and it keeps it greener for longer I think um, so this avocado is very fresh from yesterday so also with the good thing about beeswax wrap is that um, in order for the bees in the hive to make it into the little hexagons they need to keep the temperature to about 33 degrees celsius and that means that the wax is sort of malleable so that also means that when we make beeswax wrap and you warm it with your hands it it'll melt it'll sort of take the shape of your half avocado or whatever it is um, it's also a really nice idea as christmas present for somebody especially for people you know who are um, not 100% on board with zero waste. It's like a way in, <laughs> like an entry level zero waster. So let me see, I'll just go like that. So I've got here some greaseproof paper and I've cut up um, an old pillowcase. So another thing is if you want to be as zero waste as possible, um, it's really important about where you source your fabric because there's so much there's so much problems with the um, fabric industry. Um, I don't even know where to start about where you would purchase sustainable um, fabric that hasn't where no one has been exploited. But the good thing is we've all got about a hundred pillowcases in our um, wardrobes that we don't need. And you can easily find um, fabric in charity shops. The best fabric is very thin silk or cotton and you can find silk in charity shops quite a lot and you know or if you have a lovely silk um, tablecloth or shirt that has a stain in it you could cut around it. 
Um, also very thin cotton is good, but actually you can use pretty much anything, any fabric. So you just cut your little piece of fabric, put it onto a piece of greaseproof paper, and then sprinkle some bits of beeswax. So I have just, I couldn't find my grater, so I've just cut, cut this. Um, and then you put another piece of greaseproof paper on top. And by now my iron should have heated up. And I'll do it this way. And then you just use the, the iron to melt the wax and then push the wax um, to the edges. Um, so this, it's also a really nice activity to do um, with children if you're like showing them about making Christmas presents for family and things. Yeah, but of course, it's a bit dangerous with the iron. Um, you can also make them in the oven. There's loads of YouTube videos about how to make beeswax wrap. And then you just need to, to make sure and push the wax right to the edges. I should have also said that I use um, pinking shears so for the edges so that um, it, doesn't, the, it doesn't fray. And then you just peel off the top. And here we have, this is not a very good one because I didn't go right to the edges, but that, that's essentially it. And then it dries really quickly. And I forgot, the other thing I forgot was um, you can put in a few drops of olive oil or rapeseed oil and that just helps make it a little bit um, softer because they can be quite hard so it makes it a little bit softer and more malleable um, and then that is essentially it and um, so I also I sort of jumped ahead there and I know Claire you asked me to talk about Infinity Farm first so yes Infinity Farm um, keep the honey we keep the apiary of honeybees at Stormont in the NI assembly. Just so if you're looking at Stormont, just to the left, there's a little space beside the car park where we have honeybees. Um, and the really good thing about keeping them there is that all of the staff have got involved um, in helping to look after the um, honeybees, but also they kind of use it as a way to, they have lots of visitors and school groups and they use it um, as like as a tool an educational tool a little bit and also they have a huge number of groundskeepers staff involved and um, there and they sort of use the bees as a, a reason why we shouldn't be using pesticides and why we should be thinking about um, more sustainable ways to manage land because that is one um, thing that is a massive threat to honeybees and all insects is the way we manage land. Um, so I was also going to finish with what you can do to help the honeybees. So supporting your local beekeeper, like you don't need to become a beekeeper yourself unless you want to forget about all the rest of your life and only think about bees. So you, you can just support another beekeeper by just like buying honey from them or um, just being nice to them <laughs> or asking, you know, what they need planted in, in your garden that could help the bees. Um, think about where you're buying seeds as well. Plant, we all, are, we all know all about how important it is for plant to plant for pollinators, but we should also look at where we're getting our seeds from and make sure that the seeds are matched up to our climate um, and you can write to your local MP and ask what they're doing um, what they're in terms of feeding into the local environmental policy um, and you can be as zero waste as possible. Um, okay so I think I've gone have I done the 20 minutes? Am I yeah okay so I think I'll stop there and then you can ask me questions later or brilliant Tanya thank you so much that was really inspiring um yeah, your olive oil tip was brilliant yeah. about your beeswax wraps and also I wish the queen bees could emit some more pheromones maybe and help us all keep calm during COVID that would be brilliant <laughs> to do that for us <laughs> 
So um, we'll just, we're going to pass over to Tanya from Inspire Wellness Refill Store and she'll be sharing why her sisters set up the store in the first place, her and her sisters, and some great swaps for Christmas, the value in refill and shopping local. So over to you, Tanya. Hi everyone. Um, yes, I'm Tanya. I own this shop um, in Spire Wellness Refill Store in Bambridge with my two sisters, Geraldine and, and um, Christina, who was meant to be on today. So this was a rush job, although I do know what I'm talking about because I talk about it every day. Um, so why we set it up? Well, we set up last December in the middle of Christmas um, rush and it was amazing and we got so much support. And why we set it up was we're so passionate about our environment and our local community. And we're, we, you know, we're in running groups and we were, you know, we know a lot of groups of people and really what we were focusing on was trying to get a zero waste shop opened up that we could go to, to refill instead of going to a supermarket, a big chain to buy more plastic, to buy into that single use plastic. So, um, we are actually, we are a big social media shop. Um, you know, that's how we got our sort of name out there. Um, so we're on Facebook and Instagram. And then we are on, um, we just launched our website, which where you can go in and see any of our products. And as I done it in the shop so that you could see um, what we're about, the refills we have in gravity. So that's, they come out like this, you know, they fall out. And then we've got some scoop bins, which you then just scoop out. And that's all of our sort of organic whole, whole foods. But we also have like household, you know, um, household cleaning and laundry products, all eco-friendly. So no nasties, cruelty, you know, like it's cruelty free. And really then we have, um, you know, like all our other products are, you know, we do personal care, which is shampoo, conditioner, body wash. And again, we were sick of our kids, you know, um, telling us about these videos on pollution, you know, in the oceans of plastic and like all these videos about 8 million, you know, approximately 8 million pieces of plastic end up in our oceans every single day. The whole thing about even straws last year was ridiculous. So, yes, we... I think the same thing as um, Tanya was saying about, um, you know, um, the same thing as Tanya was saying um, about recycling. We shouldn't be thinking recycling. We should be thinking reusing, reusing bottles, coming in to refill rather than throw them and recycle. We would even tell customer, customers of ours to bring bottles in so that we can then distribute to pay, you know, so they're washed out and we can reuse them as well. So refuse single use plastic. That's what we're all about and reusing what you have and repurposing. Um, so really, um, again, there is no planet B and that's how we've seen it. We're very, very passionate about it. And what we want is if we can change one person one person, that person will talk to another person. They'll talk to another person, which um, when people come in like today, it is value for money because you can come in and refill as much or as little as you like. And really what I'm focusing on today is sort of the products that we do are plastic solutions, you know? So we have lots of products in stores that are do you know, alternatives to plastic. Um, you know people that have no idea that these things exist and i know there is a big move in the world about and i think it's great these mental videos about our oceans and what is being the sea life is dying and you know without all of that where are we there is no planet b we all know that i want my kids to have a future so we do have to take action and by opening this refill shop we are here that people that don't know anything about it can come in and do little by little and see by doing that, even your mental health, you're doing something good for our planet. We're doing something good for our community. We're supporting locals. We're supporting local. We, as you said about the bees, we get raw honey. So um, 
flower um wild flower honey from a man down the road and I've seen the bees I've seen his farm it is amazing and to support him um and to be giving people something that is healthy you know wholesome um the other thing is um as you mentioned bees it was quite funny because Clara was talking to me about Tanya you're talking about your bees and stuff we actually get also bees rack, wax wraps off a lady in Bangor called Tansy Crafts and I thought I would just mention a couple of you know ones that it is reducing plastic because some of the things we do are more chemical free you know that that's sort of non-toxic chemicals but this one in particular is this is her and she uses the local honey. She uses local 100% uh, cotton. So it was just to, to say that we do that. Um, also, I'm gonna move over and show you something because I just wanna say for all our customers that support us, um, a big thank you. And um, I have seen, now you don't have to come in and buy our fancy glass jars and the fancy glass bottles. I have seen people come in with their old porridge bag it is amazing that is not going into a bin that is coming back in being reused every time it's just and i've seen all sorts of stuff so it's not about going out and spending tons of money it's about doing little by little by little it makes a huge difference and like i'm still learning and and i will admit that i'm still learning i've got my little green book and I am doing wonders in the world, but I am doing it little bit by little bit because I have teenagers also, and I'm trying to teach them a little bit, like um, for instance, our steel straws, a big simple one. My son, when we opened the first day, my son took it to school and I had his whole class in the next day buying them. So we do sell them as well, but um. I'm going to just take you over here and show you something, right? So although we have all the refills of food, I just wanted to show you these. These are a huge plastic consumption, you know, reducing plastic consumption. The big barrels, right? That is all your, like, your washing up liquid, um, non-toxic, of course. Um, you use very little of these, so it is like 20 mils for a laundry, you know, liquid. But so a 500 ml bottle um, would, you know, do 25 washes. So it, and going into our waterways, you want something toxic free that it isn't full of all the stuff that we won't talk about as in that's in your normal ones that people still find it very hard not to, I've even had to say to people, you will only have to use a tiny bit. And it's very hard for people to change their, you know, their, their mindsets to say, okay, right, that's it. We have to own you. Cause I get people coming back who have used it in like two washes, do you know? Cause they're so used to using it, but these are, you can fill like people come in with their two liter milk bottles and fill these and you're just pumping it in. And it's just saved. Like if you think from when we opened in December, we have went through barrels and barrels of that. That is saving so many plastic bottles going to recycling it's just ridiculous are ending up of course in our um um oceans okay and again your mental health is all about doing things that are good for people you know what i mean good for our planet and it does make you feel good so i just wanted to talk about a couple of other things that we have in store and um, just really um i talked about the beeswax wraps and i just had a couple of other um alternatives to plastic so these are a brilliant sell so look these are you know um organic bamboo natural cotton earbuds so if you can imagine how many of them end up in the oceans um, it's ridiculous. So they're a very, very good alternative and very cheap. You know what I mean? If there's a hundred in it, very similar prices to what you're getting in the shops, but you put them straight into your food bin. It's brilliant. So we're very much, comp you know, well, compostable. So we, we sell a lot of compostable stuff that goes straight into your food bin. Like for instance, our um, scourers, you know, they're usually steel or plastic, you know, for cleaning. So they're, um, we do coconut hide. So they're very, very popular as well. 
the other thing I wanted to mention is we have a local girl that makes all of our um, crochet. So she's been with us from the start and she's very, very popular. Um, but she, this year, she made our Christmas decorations. Okay, and this is about repurpose, okay? But the little hard ring inside is the top of your milk bottle. Do you know the little ring that comes out of the milk bottle? So I just thought I'd mention it because we could all be doing stuff like this. It's just about doing small things can make a huge impact to our oceans and water in Northern Ireland. Um, we also, I had mentioned to Claire that we do a plugging, we did a plugging event at the start of the year and I couldn't get over the amount of people that got involved and the amount of rubbish that we find around our own little town. And this is only one little town. Like I know you all know what I'm talking about because it's everywhere. And unless we stand up and do something and support what's going, you know, and support the zero waste, it's gonna continue to happen. Um, the other thing is, um, I had talked to Clara about something that we're doing for Christmas, which is going extremely well. Now we do sell them, but we do all also offer a free gift wrapping and it's all compostables, all for your food bank and can be reused. Actually, I would always say, or it can go in your food bin if it's not, if it can't be reused anymore. Um, but everything from your tape to your box, to your everything, but this is our paper tape. Yep, we can get all of this in store and you can get it on our website. Also, our ribbon. This is compostable ribbon. It's a hundred meters of it. It's brilliant. Um, I was very surprised all this stuff. Um, our twine um, and our wee labels, they're all compostable. Um, and that's, that's really it. The only, the last thing, which is one of my favorite, cause it's going back to my mummy and um, you know, like back to your roots kind of thing. And um, I always remember her talking about life boy soap, which could clean anything, okay? And um, I'm just gonna show you what we do. Um, wait two seconds, I got it. So this is called Marcel soap, right? And it is wonderful. And we sell it with a wee pop brush. It's going back to the old, but it washes dishes, your hair, your body, um, um, what else? Stains out of clothes, it washes your clothes. I think back my mom said they usually used it for washing clothes because you didn't have uh, all the bad stuff that we have now. <laughs> but these are really, this is a good one for, and you know, you're not going to buy any plastics at all because I think half the stuff you see now in supermarkets have this stupid senseless you know, plastic wrapped around them, they don't need it. And I, for one, will leave all my plastic in Tesco's when I'm there. I pull it all off. I don't need it. They can keep it. But I try not to even, even when I'm with my kids now, we go to the local grocers. But there's some things that you just can't. We There's even stuff that we can't get in that, you know, even some of the stuff, the send in and the say is eco, end up isn't eco. Um, so I just want to say for the end of all of this, because I know I talk with my hands and I talk too much, but I want to get the sort of 20 minutes in there. But um, the benefits of doing this is you're benefiting the ocean, you're benefiting the world, we're benefiting fitting our kids future um, we're inspired what we'd love to say we're inspiring wellness your mental um your health you know as in within because all of our foods are absolutely gorgeous but they're all healthy most of them are healthy you know as in you've got your lentils and you know you've got um all we all of the stuff's organic so no pesticides used um, and that's all your raw honey um and that's, that's really all I was, I don't know what else to say. Just, I think if we all get on the same page, I know for me, I'm buying everybody eco gifts, sustainable gifts this year, because I want them to be as passionate as I am, as I even want them to do baby steps, as in, even if you just change your kitchen, and I do know like the bar, <laughs> and we've loads of different ones. They're not just the Marcel ones, but, there's lots of different options and um, I just, 
I want to say thanks for everybody that's came on today and thank you Clara for inviting us um I just um I have been like having nightmares about this all night <laughs> but and Christina's in the background if you can see <laughs> um helping a customer so um listen if you've any any of you have any questions or if you want to go on our website and look at all our products um there's some delicious as in we do vegan sweets and everything we do vegan wraps so really do look in there because we are passionate about saving this planet and um i think if we all come together we can so and yeah Thank, Thank you so much. I love your enthusiasm and that Marcel bar of soap. I'm so getting that. I love things that are one item, but it has so many purposes. Yeah. I love that. Really, really love that. So thank you so much. So I just want to say thank you to both of our speakers for your contributions today. I really appreciate the time that you've put into this and coming on and chatting to us all. It's so kind of you. And um, I'm sure all of us can take just one thing, as Tanya says, from that and take it on board and make a change today for healthier oceans and healthier minds. And I just want to thank all of you for joining us. But before I take any questions, if you have any for Tanya or Tanya, I just wanted to think it's really worth acknowledging where we are right now with COVID. It has brought us so many challenges, but it's also opened our eyes to there's no separation between us and the ecosystem. When the planet is stressed, we are stressed and we can't, we can't ignore that we're all connected to each other and to everything. And I think that's really permeated throughout the conversation today. And Dr. Jane Goodall's really sums it up with a great quote, and I'm just gonna take it directly from her and it'll give us all food for thought. So every single one of us make some impact on the planet every single day and we get to choose what sort of impact we make so i think that's really poignant so before i just want to check and we any questions does anybody want to raise their hand or unmute themselves and ask tonya or tanya a question any burning questions out there before you get started sure i'll ask tonya tonya what about um this is a general one on our healthy oceans, healthy minds. What's your relationship to the coast, waterways or outdoors and why do you value the environment? Oh, is that an interesting yeah. question for you? Well, bees don't, um, don't fly over oceans. <laughs> so um, I, I, I guess I really value the ocean I, because I grew up around Strangford Lock and um the seaweed and the birds um and it's just really shocking we've seen all of the news about the issues around plastic pollution and so on and the coral reefs um and actually it's a little bit difficult because there's quite a lot that we've lost that we'll never get back um, so it's hard to keep upbeat when you're thinking about oceans, but then um, then you find like we're we're always talking about zero waste, but actually I really like art and music and literature, and that's kind of an extra thing that's not it's useful for your well being, um, and it's really important. Um, but like bees don't make art, um, but maybe they do, and we just don't know about it. I'm not sure. Um, but I've come across some really interesting artists who are using um like tampon applicators to make um installations and to make jewelry and i'm really interested in um the organizations and people around who are um reusing waste plastic and extracting the microplastics or extracting precious pr plastics to make new things um and also I've heard that there are some, there is some research going on about bacteria that is evolved to eat plastic. So that's really encouraging. Um, yeah, I think it was really interesting what you said earlier about the bees and they all work in unison, you know, and like what we're just talking about as in the oceans and what we do and everything, we need to work in unison to make the you know to make that healthy planet and a healthy mind that we all need so i think like everything's interconnected it doesn't matter whether you're near the ocean or what but it all it all connects and all can really make an impact and i think you, all those little tiny things build up mm -hmm. is there anyone else that has 
asked a question. Can anybody? No, nobody has any questions. There's, can I say something? Sure. Is Heather there? Heather has had made a comment. Yes. Yeah. About I want to know what, what Heather you use your beeswax wrap for. Oh, I've asked her to unmute, so. And there's a question from Julie Dugan, and you're, you're also a beekeeper, Julie Dugan, yes. We have only four hives at Stormont, and actually they're temporarily, be, before the lockdown happened, they had to be temporarily moved because access was going to be a problem, and they, they won't go back again until after winter. But it's only four hives. Um, I think they, they would like to expand, but actually there's not a huge amount of forage around that area. You would think that it's really good um, because of the state, but it's very well managed. So there's not as much ivy as you would find in other places. And we know that bees really um, need the ivy um, in the autumn time. So we've had to feed them a little bit more than um, that than I ever have before, really. I mean, there are lots of gardens, but I just think there's still a lot could be done. I would love to see Stormont turn the green in the front just into a wildflower garden or just let the dandelions go. That would be gorgeous. <laughs> um, hi, Tanya, it's Heather here. Hi. Um, <laughs> I, I remember that wonderful uh, ported down uh, grape that you took, and I use my wraps just to cover dishes when I put them in the fridge, whatever. Um, they're probably at the end of their life, so I probably will need to refresh them. Yeah. But um, I think that could happen after this afternoon. I'll get my iron out and I'll refresh them. I forgot to say that, that you can refresh them or you can compost them if the depending on the fabric you can compost them afterwards. Anyway, it's nice to see you again, Heather, or hear you. Yeah, yeah, you 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 left wonderful memories. And you know, I used to be one of those people who tut tutted whenever there were dandelions in people's gardens and whatever. But I'm now thinking they're feeding the bees, they're feeding the bees. So I don't need that sort of expanse of beautiful green grass, dandelions, clover, wildflowers. I, I got it, you know, but as, as you said in the sessions, it's just, you know, you just have to change very slowly and then suddenly you never go back. Mm -hmm. Heather, that's a really good point to end on. Like, I re it really is just one step at a time and you never go back. You just want to find the next thing that you think you can swap out or reduce or whatever. So yeah, no, I think that's really, really important. Look, I just want to thank everybody. I think Nicola um, or Karina has put up all the links to both Tanya and Tonya. So all the links you should see in the wee chat there. And I just want to thank everybody for joining us today and for being being with us and sharing in the discussion and we really hope that you enjoy this afternoon and I know Nicola and Karina as part of Healthy Oceans and Healthy Minds have a couple more talks and blogs coming up over the next week or so so check out Live Here Love Here on Facebook and their website to see what's going on there so thank you very much everybody I really appreciate it take care thank you bye bye